Hi and welcome back to uh, Dizzy So and So. Today's project is going to be a nice simple tea cosy um, and we're going to use the techniques we learned in the last video which is just a nice straight seam uh, with just a nice straight uh, stitch. This is a very simple project. Um, so what we'll look at now is what we need for our project. We need a pattern and this is really simple it's just um, that shape the size or just larger than the size of your tea coat your teapot so it will fit over your teapot nice and easily and there's no gap at the bottom so it actually sits on the um, uh, on the surface so there's no escape of all that heat just keeps your tea nice and warm um, so if in doubt just make it a little bit longer than it needs to be so it's nice and tall then we've got our main fabric, I've chosen this nice um, London fabric, I quite like that. Uh, we've got a lining fabric, I've used uh, here, um, it's like a, a medium weight cotton, it's like a bit heavier than the main fabric. And you'll see why, um, it, it lips around the bottom, so it, it's nice for it to be dark, because if you get any tea dribbles, um, they won't show up in this, they won't stain as much as if you have the light colour fabric touching the surface. And then we've got two um, special bits of fabric here. We've got two ounce wadding, um, and then this wadding, which is called Insul Bright. I don't know if you can see, maybe I can bring it closer to the camera, but uh, it has like a silver foil layer inside, which is in. Um, impregnated with and that is the same material that they use to make your oven gloves so it's really heat reflective um, will stop all that heat coming out and keep your tea nice and warm so your second cup is just as hot as your first right so let's get on with it first thing you have to do is cut out the fabric pieces I've done that but top tip for you guys is when you put your um, pattern on the fabric is pin it to the fabric so it doesn't move around so I mean otherwise what could happen is you start so, uh, cutting away here and it will shift around as you cut and you'll end up with a, a misshapen piece so make sure you pin it first we've done that already we now need to get the order um, of our uh, tea cosy pieces together and we need to get it right otherwise um, It'll look strange. Okay, so we want uh, a layer of insole bright with the foil side down, a layer of wadding, a layer of our main fabric, and we want it right side up, then right side down. And a layer of two ounce wadding, and then insole bright with the foil uppermost. Now you can see it's quite thick, and we've got to stitch all the way around the edge here. And the seam allowance on this is one centimetre. Um, you can make it bigger if you want to, but it just because there's so much of it, the shorter the seam allowance, the less bulk you'll have on the on the seam. Um, so. If your sewing machine struggles, just take your time and wind it by hand um, where it gets stuck. But it should do okay. So let's okay, so I've stuck a couple of pins in, about three pins in, just to hold it in place. You can use more if you want. Um, the more pins, really, the easier it is. Um, and I've also put a little bit of black tape, I don't know if you can see that there, um, where my one centimetre seam line is. So I'm going to line this edge up with a piece of black tape. So I've got a nice even one centimetre seam allowance. So let's get this. And then just back stitching a couple of times to lock it in at the end. Okay, so we've stitched that all the way along. And now what we need to do is turn it in side out or the right side out where the two pieces of fabric are 
You can see the beginnings of our tea cosy. Look at that, it looks great already. Right, the next stage now is to join the two lining pieces in. And then once we've joined the two lining pieces, we can stick those inside and sew around the bottom edge. Okay, so I've got a lining pieces here, two pieces, um, back to back. And what we're going to do now is do exactly the same with the other pieces. We're just going to sew around this top edge here, leaving the bottom open, because that's where we're going to join all that wadding and fabric together with the lining. So we sew the lining together. Okay, so that's done there. Okay, so we've sewn our lining pieces together along this top edge, leaving this straight edge open, and we'll show you why now. Get our main piece, and you pop that inside the lining. Now it's important now, if you want a nice professional sort of finish, to line up the seams at the sides. Get it all the way in there. And this could be a bit tricky because it won't fit too well. So you're going to have to squash it in, line up the edges, line up the seams, and then pin it in place. So I've lined up the, where are we? Lined up the the seam there, you notice the seam allowance is still sticking out because when we turn it the right side in that will go on the inside. Um, so I've lined up the seams there and I'm going to pin it in place. And the same with the other end. Okay, and then I'm going to stretch it out a bit, make sure the work is all lined up at the bottom. And I'm going to stick a pin in about halfway along there, just to help me uh, keep the fabric in place, stop it riding out. And the same on the other side. So we've got about a pin at every quarter. And also if we get any gathering then we can just sort it out as we go. The pins will help us, you know, realise that that gathering is taking place. Okay. Right. Before we sew around this bottom edge, we need to leave a gap of about this big, so I'd say about I don't know, 10 to 15 centimetres, because that hole is um, where we're going to turn it inside out. So Remember to be careful to catch all the layers, all the layers of fabric when you sew. You don't want to have to go back over any. It never looks as good the second time round. Gonna stop there. There's my my hole. Just gonna back stitch to make sure my um, sewing doesn't come undone. So let's see how it looks. Now be careful. You don't want to rip any stitches. So just ease it out through that hole, nice and gently. You've got quite a lot of bulk. Just take your time. 
see it's coming out now. There we are. So that's what we should end up with. And then we'll push the lining inside. this lovely little lip at the bottom which um, touches the, the work surface when you put it on your tea coat, on top of your teapot so that bit gets all the little tea dribbles and stains on and the white fabric or the lighter fabric um, is saved from that which is a great little design. Now all we have to do is deal with this hole that we've left so what we do is we fold over the fabric our one centimetre seam allowance and then slip stitch it. Um, or you can um, top stitch along here to um, give you a nice sort of crisp neat finish and it looks neater than my hand sewing so I might do that. So I'll just get the iron out, give it a quick press in place and then we might top stitch, I'll, we will top stitch around it and, um, and see how that looks. Uh, top stitching is just the same as a straight stitch, except you're doing it from the top side of the garment. So it's all, you can see it, it's out there. Um, that's all it is, not some uh, uber Gucci technique or anything like that. It's just a straight stitch as you've been using all along. Um, it's just on top. The important thing to know though is to try and keep it really straight um, with your seam. Because if you sort of deviate and wander around, it looks, it doesn't look as professional as it should do. Okay, so give me a minute to press that and then we'll top stitch it. So I've just given it a good press with an iron, so I've put that raw edge nice and neatly tucked in. And then I'm going to sew, I'm going to sew along this edge here, as close as possible to the edge as I can. Top stitching all the way around and hopefully that will seal up that hole without me having to do any hand sewing, because I hate hand sewing. There's a reason why we invented machinery, let's use it. Okay, so let's give it a go and see how it turns out. I've just taken the box off there to uh, just make it easier to manoeuvre the tea cosy round. And you'll use that when you're making sleeves and cuffs and things like that. So it's there for us to use, let's use it. And again, don't forget to backstitch. Right here, where the seam allowances are, it's getting caught on the foot because there's too much bulk. It's coming to like a, a wall of seam allowances. So just raise up your uh, foot, push it one stitch length in, and hopefully that will give it the edge it needs to continue on. And just finish with your back stitch. There's some scissors. Okay, there you are, the finished article. All we need to do now is go and trim off the uh, last bits of thread. But there you go, one tea cosy. Really nice pat material on top. A nice dark edge around the bottom to catch all those tea dribbles. And this fantastic wadding on the inside to keep everything nice and warm. Top tip as well, that Insel Bright stuff that we got for this. Get it off the internet, I found it really difficult to find in any of the haberdasheries. Um, so grab it off the internet. You buy it by the meter unfortunately. Um, but it's great for making oven gloves, it's what's in your oven gloves. Um, so if you've got big hands like me and none of the oven gloves fit, you can make your own. Good luck having a go at that. I'll see you next time.